<laughs> Welcome to today's 3D print. Today, our Halloween special. We have a jack-o'-lantern. This thing is wicked. And here's the cool part. It's made in pieces. So, this stem is a separate part. So you can print it in green. Maker Geek's crystal green. And the pumpkin itself is orange. It's printed in 3D Solutex Real Orange. Now, originally, the way these are supposed to work is you have these faces you can print. So here's the sticky tongue one. It sticks his tongue out. And I also have Jack Skellington. And then that one's the traditional pumpkin. And on the back side is just your plain pumpkin face. The plain pumpkin face is also a template for making your own. Now, you made these clips. And these clips would stick into here and stick into the pumpkin so you could remove them. The idea, I guess, being all the parts are 3D printed. Not ideal. Uh, several reasons. Well, I, I guarantee you they work fine, but I made it huge. <laughs> that means a lot of filament. It took like 1.7 kilograms of filament to print all these parts. Um, it took um, 3 quarters of a kilogram, almost 0 .8, 0 0.85 kilograms, almost a whole roll, to print the pumpkin body. And then it took almost a full kilogram to print the four faces. And that's by cheating a lot. So, uh, three perimeters, almost no infill, only infill where I needed it. And that was where the cheating didn't work so well. As you can see, it's pretty thin. And that means these openings, they break. When you push those clips in, they break. Now, if I were to print this in something flexible, that might work. But I had an even better idea. I was like, you know something? Screw this. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Magnus. That's it. I have a little magnet in here to hold the light. So I can put a light inside there. And then what I do is I have a magnet here and here. And a magnet lined up in the same location on the pumpkin face. So they just snick right into place. Boom. They're on there. And then you can take the back off. Same magnets. Hold it in place. And put a second face or a different face on the back. So there's Jack Skillington's face. And then of course we have the sticky tongue face with his tongue sticking out. That one took like 30 hours to print. That's pretty cool. I love this thing. It's, it's freaking huge. <laughs> Here's a can of soda for size. <laughs> this thing's bigger than my head. Actually, I bet. I, got, I wonder. <laughs> Can I fit my head inside? I bet you the answer is yes. <laughs> my head fits inside the pumpkin, and I have a very big head. <laughs> I was wondering about that. So I had a dilemma when printing this. I wanted to print it huge. I could print it up to 323%. There's only one problem with printing this at 323%. I had to use the S4 to do it at 323%. And that's fine, except for the fact that it was an 85 hour print. And I wanted this done for Halloween. And all the parts would have to be on the S4. Because, except for the little pieces, the faces would also be too big for any printer but the S4. But, if I did a little bit smaller, 300%, I could do the faces on the S3s, the, CR, the regular CR10s, and the body on the S4. So while the body was printing in 73 hours and 18 minutes on the S4, each day one of these was printing on the CR10. So I was able to get myself three faces plus the back all done before the body finished printing. Uh, no, so the one piece was still printing when the body was done printing. And then the ender printed my little crystal green transparent stem and the Anet E10 printed my clips. You saw that in my quickie video. This thing is amazing. I'll give you a close-up of this. Now these parts here are the, the front and back of the CR10 and then the body is printed with the CR10 S4. And you notice these little shifts? Little shift right there. And there's another one on here. Yeah, right here. That's infill. That's where the infill starts, because these are all hollow. These are empty. I only put infill to support the structure of the clip 
chambers, which I want to see if the guy, or maybe even I'll do it, modify this to remove them all together. Don't even worry about trying to make them all 3D printed, just use magnets. So, a little tip and trick for you guys. How do you put magnets in here? <laughs> That's pretty easy. You put magnets in anything pretty easily. But how do you put magnets here in such a way that you can then line them all up so all the parts will have the same magnets? Because you know these aren't specific. They are lined up. So I can take this and put it over here and it still lines up with the magnets. So how do I do that? It's actually not as hard as you think. It's pretty easy. All you need is some double stick tape and some masking tape. So, you notice something I have here? I have a little magnet stuck to the table here. There's a reason for that magnet to be stuck there. See, magnets are polarized. They only fit one way. And when you put a magnet on, you have to put it on the right way. Because if you take two magnets and try to put them on opposite to each other, they repel. And you'll see this will flip around. See? So, I place one magnet on the table here with a piece of double stick tape. And then I make sure whenever I put a magnet on the pumpkin, the stuck side is the same as this stuck side, and the open side is the same as that open side. And that's very easy. Just take a magnet, stick it on the magnet that's on the table. Now put your sticky tape on this side. There you go. You've now matched the polarity of the magnet. To do it is pretty easy. You take one of your faces and you stick it on the pumpkin. You use some masking tape that you have here and you tape the pumpkin in place. Then you come around from the inside here. Can you see that? Yep, you can see that. I can make that a little easier for you. You come around to the inside here. Oh yeah and you stick your magnet with the double stick tape onto the face of the pumpkin. All right? And then you take another magnet and you just let it freely stick itself to the magnet that's already there. Again, keeping the polarity lined up correctly. And then you take some super glue and you glue this magnet, the second magnet, not the first one, to the inside of the pumpkin. Then you do the same thing up here. Okay? Now you very carefully, because the magnet might be stronger than your double stick tape, so you might have to help it separate. But you very carefully you separate the two, leaving the double stuck magnets on here and the super glued magnets in here. Then you go in here and you add a bunch of extra glue to reinforce it, or maybe even put a little right angle piece in there to reinforce it. And then you add some more glue to this part to reinforce it. And there you go. You've now got your face attached to the pumpkin. Well, doing the next face is even easier. So when you're ready to do your next face, you again do your little trick with the magnets. You stick it to the magnet you have on the table here. You put your double stick tape on it. And then you just take this magnet with the double stick tape on it and snick it to the magnets that's already on there. And do the same thing with this one. So now you've already put the magnets in place. You take your second face. You put it in place, tape it in place. You know, you only need a couple pieces of tape this time. And when you've got it lined up, give it a little gentle push. All right, you might have to again go inside there with a little bit of glue, glue the magnet in place because the magnet will be stronger than the sticky tape that you use to attach the back. You just got to get them apart without moving the magnet and then reinforce with glue. And that's it. You can get all your faces done and ready to go with magnets just like that. The cool thing is you can put two faces on it. So if you want to have a face on each side so that it's working on a walkway and then both sides of the, oh, I left one of the magnets on there. This way you can have two faces on there, or for example, you can do a custom back. So if you want to go into um, some editing software and modify the back of one of these to be a different face or to add your own custom words to it, anything you want. It's a pretty ingenious design. I'll have the link to the Thingiverse file where you can download this yourself. And again, this is printed at 300%, so this is a whole lot bigger than the one you'll print, unless you want to print it this big. Uh, a little update from my other Halloween projects. I printed out two more of the masks. This is the mask. Again on the TiVo Tornado in Sunlu PLA Plus Blue. And then this is on the CR10 Mini. I told you guys I'd confirm that worked. I had to shorten it a little bit. You probably can't see it in the video, but this one is like 11 millimeters shorter on the y-axis. And I printed that in Catalyst Orange, some cheap brand of filament I found. But that came out very nice. So there's your two skull masks <laughs> in sunlu, PLA blue, and orange. I'll have links to that again down below. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. These things were fun. I'm going to print out the rest of the faces that are available for this pumpkin. Um, I would suggest using infill unless you're going large like this, in which case infill is going to eat up a lot of time in plastic. But if you're going at 100%, just add infill and those clips will work just fine. Enjoy!